hey guys happy new year and welcome back to the champagne room how you zone mm, 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 mm. the reason why i don't have a glass of how you zone is because i is detoxing mm, 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 mm. so before i start the story i just have to ask you guys to please make sure you don't forget to subscribe like share comment do the thing and let's get started this story is about well you're just going to have to listen ada was getting ready for an epic new year's eve party and like many of us she was super excited to be getting out of the house to have an excuse to get dressed up because lockdown had just been way too much it had just been a lot and she was like listen this year i'm ringing this year in um in style with good food with good drinks with good company i'm doing it I am doing it like just nothing is going to stop me and so she did and of course it just so happened that her very good friend Sarah was hosting the New Year's Eve party at her place so she knew it was going to be amazing she knew her friend Sarah is a socialite she knows style she has good taste she is a socialite she knows exactly what it's about where it's at and she also knows certain people so Ada was like going don't have to ask me twice I am going and I'm going there to have a good time no excuses no apologies so the day of the New Year's Eve party of course Ada made sure she took care of business she had her hair done she had her nails done uh, her makeup she had her favorite makeup artist come to the house to do her face up and of course the dress honey the dress okay she got herself a beautiful sparkly golden strap mini dress just very chic sleek just beautiful 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 and it looked amazing on her and she made sure to go with that she had her nude heels simple accessories she was ready for the night she decided to go an hour early to the party to make sure that her girl was okay that the champagne was on chill that snacks were out that needed to be out she went there to make sure everything was good she just wanted to make sure everything was good so she gets there and of course true to their friendship and their love and respect for each other they are hyping one another up they're those girlfriends who are not intimidated by each other there's love there's respect there's upliftment they are those who are fixing each other's crowns who are hyping each other up there's no competition we're all great we're both great and that's what makes this dynamic so powerful it's just love and so when she gets there they're exchanging compliments um a dad tells her how gorgeous she looks and she's like honey that dress on your body on you is everything now let me tell you guys a little bit about ada ada is stunning she's stunning she's beautiful she's got a curvy body she has got a cute waist she has this beautiful 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 dark skin oh her skin you guys gorgeous gorgeous dark skin now can you imagine that in that sequin or that sparkly um gold dress i mean honey please she stole the show she looked beautiful Another thing I want to make you guys aware of about Ada is Ada believes her body is her biggest asset. She is very sexy as I told you guys and she is very aware of it. Very aware of it and not afraid to use it and to cut a long story short she is down for the get down. She's not ashamed to have casual relationships, to have casual sleepovers, to do what she wants to do. She's not afraid. Like why should she be afraid? It's my body, it's my rules. I'm doing what I want to do and I'm doing it with who I want to do it with. And so she was not afraid to leave places with anybody. Like if she was feeling you, she was going with you. 
Get to the New Year's Eve. Well, the New Year's Eve party now starts. Guests are coming in. They're also looking amazing. Some are suited up. Others are in beautiful dresses, in be beautiful um, two pieces. I mean, everybody just looks stunning. Mini skirts. It's it's beautiful. It really is beautiful. People come looking absolutely gorgeous and just in line, I guess, with the type of person Sarah is and the type of parties she hosts. Like, they came ready to represent themselves. Not even Sarah, to represent themselves because they know how she is. And so the night goes on. Eventually, Ada sees Sarah in the kitchen and she rushes over to her and she was like, you've got to introduce me to that guy. You've got to, like, I'm not letting you go. You're introducing me. And Sarah just laughs and grabs her by the arm. She pulls her towards the guy across the room. And she's like, Max, this is Ada. Ada, this is Max. I figured I would introduce you guys because I've been noticing you two staring at each other. Enjoy. And she walks off. And they both kind of smile and laugh it off. And he says to her, nice to meet you, Ada. And she's like, oh, nice to meet you. And he's like, by the way, you look absolutely beautiful in that dress. And she was like, and you in the suit. And as they're talking, they extend their hands out to shake. Now, from the moment they shaked hands, you guys, the chemistry was like, t -t ting, 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 ting. Okay. They were feeling each other. And it wasn't just, um, it was physical. It was physical. That's what it was. It was very physical. They were very into each other. Physically, yes. Yes, sir. So they spent the rest of the night with each other, dancing, having a good time, laughing, um, drinking, eating. And of course, the countdown was the moment they just shared that kiss unapologetically. They entered in the New Year's locking lips. The night went on. They danced away. And of course... Adam made her way home with, well, back home to Max's place, Maxwell's place. February. Adair, Ada is in a boardroom meeting. Now, she's at a point where she really, really, really no longer likes her job. She no longer likes her job. She's not motivated by it. She's not in tune with the people she works with, especially her boss. Her boss is not as qualified as she should be. In fact, Ada is more qualified than her boss and she knows it. The boss knows it too. Ada is also smarter than her boss and her boss knows it too. And as a result, the boss gets Ada to put together presentations and then she'll present them as her own work. And Ada sits there and allows it to, to happen. She allowed it to happen for a very, very long time. She figured, you know, I don't need to be the front of this. I am I know it's my work. I know I'm good at it. She, my boss knows I'm good at it and I'm getting paid. So what, how harmful could this be? What, what, I mean, is this really an issue? Eventually, that just was not enough for her. Eventually, she couldn't convince herself of that. And so in this particular boardroom meeting, while the boss is talking and presenting um, to new clients, um, potential clients, um, Ada is listening to the presentation and she can't even hold herself together anymore. Her boss is talking and Ada completes her sentence. Now everybody in the room kind of looks over at Ada like, what's going on? And I guess there's that moment of, oh, how do you know what she's about to say? What are you doing? And Ada's boss kind of panics and looks at Ada like, don't, what are you doing? And she carries on presenting. Eventually Ada does it again. Now, this time, Ada stands up and she says to her boss, would you like me to finish this presentation, seeing as though I'm the one who wrote the whole thing? Now, everybody cannot believe it. Everybody is staring at Ada. These potential clients are gasping. They are in shock. Like, mommy, insubordination. Like, are you kidding? What is going on? And she stands up. She takes her belongings and she walks out. She's like, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. I've had enough. I've done what I needed to do. I cannot justify the foolery any, anymore. No, not doing it. March. Ada's sister Ella is hosting her birthday party. But Ada didn't hear this from Ella. No, she heard it from a friend of a friend who just happened to say in passing, not knowing that 
Ada and Ella had not spoken in a very long time that, oh, no, I'm attending your sister's party. I'll see you there. And so Ada on the day of decides she's going to follow her sister. Uh, Ada on the day of decides she's going to rock up to the place where her sister is hosting her party. She doesn't get out of the car. She watches her sister through that glass window at the restaurant smiling and laughing as she opens her gifts and toasting and cheers cheer cheersing cheering cheers <laughs> with her friends and um she's hurt she's hurt she's so so hurt she drives off she never goes in there ella never sees her she drives off april Ada is pregnant. She's pregnant. She's walking around in a colorful kaftan, minding her business, doing her own thing, not really engaging or interacting with anybody. She's just being Ada in this kaftan that is there to, I guess, conceal and protect the fact that she's pregnant and it's perhaps a little too soon for the rest of the public to know that mm, you're pregnant, mommy. You're absolutely pregnant. May. <laughs> May. Ada attends an auction, a rooftop auction. Now, of course, when she goes there, she knows that half of the, you know, half of the package is the way you're dressed how you're dressed and so she goes there in this beautiful tight bandaged dress looking the bomb dot like she unapologetically gets there beautiful orange dress high heels and she waits for the, the 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 auction to finish up and she goes to one of the cocktail tables and stands there patiently waiting for a particular woman who was one of the major bidders during the auction. She waits for her and she sees this woman walking across the room, going from table to table to table. Eventually, Ada picks up her champagne, walks across the room to this lady and she starts talking to her. And she starts explaining to her that, you know, um, actually this initiative I'm doing has been successful we're already 16 villages in we've been supplying them with clean water it's a major project i have sponsors on board it's big it's absolutely big and i couldn't be happier and of course this major bidder is looking at Ada like this is magnificent this is brilliant of course of course of course i would love to be involved in something this big and so she says to her, listen contact my office um as soon as i get back in town you and i have to meet so that we can discuss how i could get involved in this june ada is visiting a friend at his executive ap apartment no let me actually make it clear at his penthouse suite okay and so she gets there and she makes sure she looks good. She makes sure she looks the part. She makes sure mm, 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 I'm okay. Gets into the lift and she presses the 20th floor. Now, let me just paint the scene for you. The, 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 the elevator is glass. And so the higher you get, you've actually got, and it's kind of on the out, outward part of the building. So... You've got a view of everything that's going on as you go up. And so she gets in this lift and the lift is climbing and climbing and moving towards the 20th floor. And the higher she gets, the more spectacular and magnificent the view becomes. She's looking at the city like, my goodness. And of course, it's sunset. So she's seeing tones of orange and yellows and pinks. And it looks stunning. It absolutely looks stunning to her. She is just looking out like, my goodness. My goodness, imagine seeing this view every day. Couldn't help but feel how lucky is this guy. Now, as she's going up, she's feeling a bit unsettled. The lift is starting to feel a bit loose. It's starting to rattle a bit and she doesn't like it. It's making her a bit anxious. 
Before she knows it, she can now hear this grinding of the machine and she's just like, no, I don't like it. What is going on? And she's looking at the elevator buttons. Eventually, it comes to a dead halt at, on the 18th floor. It stops. And she's like, well, I, listen, I, I'll get out here and walk the rest. I'm not using this. And so she's pressing, pressing, pressing. The doors are not opening. Nothing's happening. She hears this grinding, very loud sound. And before she knows it, she notices that the lights for the buttons are going off again. And they're going from 18 um, to 17, 16, 15, 14. Like they're going down. And all of a sudden, the lift starts plummeting. Like it is going, um, like it goes down. Like she is freaking out she's panicked her heart has dropped like she is so scared she's so scared for her life and then it stops aggressively abruptly at the third floor it stops it just stops july adas sitting in a very familiar room very 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 familiar room She's sitting there and she notices that her loved ones are also there and they're wearing black. They're wearing black and there's cakes and the smell of coffee and tea just permeating through the air. And there's this sadness and this somber feeling like looking at the people's faces, it was very, very clear that this was a funeral. This was her mother's funeral. She was experiencing so much anguish, so much pain, so much grief, grief. She was in so much pain and she didn't recall ever feeling that way before. So, so much pain. It was gloomy. August, Ada meets with Sarah for brunch. They're now doing their little catch up and they go for brunch. They arrive at a restaurant, they meet in the car park and they make their way into the restaurant. As soon as they get there, Ada asks the waiter to show them to a table for two, goes over, um, sits them down and asks them what he can bring. Before they know it, they have a bottle of champagne on their table, they're having a drink now, Ada notices something very, very, very strange. As she looks around the room, Ada notices that she notices or recognizes the faces in that room. Like, these are very familiar faces. And the more she looks around this room, the more she notices, wait a minute, I know these guys. I know these guys. And that's when it dawns on her that a lot of the guys sitting in this restaurant are men she's had shenanigans with these are men she's been intimate with these are men who some of them she went home after a war well, she went home with um meeting that was a one night stand some of these men were people she had you know gone on a couple of dates with and done what she had done these were men who sarah had introduced her to as well it just felt very like, oh my goodness, this is, this is hectic. This is hectic. And so she's looking around the room, kind of looking anxious, kind of looking a bit rattled. And Sarah's asking her, my love, what is going on? Why are you looking so, um, what's going on? And she just says to her, she shakes her head and she's like, talk to me. But I couldn't get the words out. She just couldn't get the words out. September. Ada's leaving a place with Ella. She's leaving this place with Ella and she notices or she hears a growling in the background and she says to Ella, did you hear that? And of course, Ella says, no, what's going on? What, what are you talking about? And she says, can't you hear that noise? And Ella says, no, Ada, what's going on? And they keep walking. Now, this is in the middle of the night. And so they keep walking and she's like, no, I can't hear it. What's going on? Ada turns around and she notices immediately that there's a vicious looking dog standing, sitting in the dark, growling at them. She immediately takes off running unapologetically. She's like, nope, not doing this. She runs, grabs her sister Ella by the arm and she starts tearing down that street. Now the dog is coming 
at them from behind viciously aggressively she can hear it she can hear this dog is out for blood she is scared 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 she runs she runs she j remembers she doesn't let her sister's arm go she's just like i'm here to protect my sister we're both getting out of this she runs october 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 ada finds herself in a very very serious yet calming and also chilling experience there's this huge flood when i say flood i mean ridiculous 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 there's water everywhere there is a flood ada is sitting on the roof of a car while there's this water surrounding her everywhere she can't make sense of it she's not anxious she's confused like what is going on why is there so much water she's aware that there's a flood but why what is going on like what is all of this water about my goodness what is all of this water about she's looking at this water and the thing that's also confusing her is this water isn't dirty it's not murky it's not full of debris and mud it's just clear water then suddenly ada wakes up she wakes up she's in this room that she doesn't quite recognize she's looking around like what the heck is going on she's trying to make sense of it she's looking around trying to just see like is there anything i recognize the only thing she recognizes is her gold strap dress that she wore to the new year's eve party the night before stringed across this guy's couch or chair in his bedroom she sees her her, her dress and she tries to like kind of sit up and where my shoes where's my underwear what like what what and she looks over and she notices a man laying next to her in that bed at this point she's just like i've got to get out of here i've got to get out of here and so she gets up out of bed she slips her dress on she goes she finds her shoes and then she notices that her bra is near his table his bedside table and she goes over and when she looks over she sees this guy's license on the table and sure enough it's max the guy she picked up last night she tears out of there she gets into the the into a cab and she's just so freaked out she's so freaked out about everything she's at this point i mean even when she woke up she was sweating gets into the cab and she calls her therapist so this is 2 weeks later ada is looking at dr momo momo and momo is looking at her as well dr m says to her ada We've been unpacking this dream of yours for 2 weeks now and I feel it's time to take take a different approach. Would you allow me? And Ada's like, I mean, what do you mean? And she says, "Well, look, I know that you're not big on, you know, church going to church and your beliefs and this that and the other, but I want to take a different approach." And she says, "It's not that I don't believe in Christ and God. I do." I believe in them. I just don't believe in the church. And Dr. M says, oh, "Fair enough, fair enough." So, would you be comfortable if we spoke Christian woman to Christian woman? And Ada nods her head like, "Yes, go ahead." And she says, "Ada, we've been unpacking this for two weeks now. And first of all, I want to start off by saying that you are not having some sort of nervous breakdown. You're not going crazy. And that's my first exercise and challenge is I want you to be conscious about the things you say to and about yourself. So I want you to stop saying I'm going crazy. I'm a mess. I'm this, I'm that. I'm the doctor and I can honestly say to you you're not going crazy. You're not a mess. you're having a moment and we're going to unpack that moment then she moved on to say to her one of my other patients of course not mentioning names one of my other patients was going through something very similar with regards to 
an identity crisis. That's what Dr. M referred to it as. It's an identity crisis. It's um, not knowing who you are and therefore allowing other people to define you, allowing the devil to define you by using language like I am a mess. I am this, I am not enough, I'm having a breakdown, I am depressed, I am this. She was like, no, no, we're not using those words. And so what I did with my um, patient was I challenged her to move away from content, specifically music, because she happened to be a lover of music, her patient. Um, move away from music that is very accusatory, music that is very, it doesn't help. So how Dr. M was able to pinpoint this was obviously asking her what she liked, what type of music she liked, and then said to her, you know, give me some, give me a playlist. Let me go home and also, you know, get into the vibe with you. Let me get to know you better. And Dr. M was so shocked at the type of music she was listening to. And so she challenged her patient that I want you to stop listening to this music that is constantly putting this idea without you even knowing and without you even being aware but when you sing along to it you proclaim it over your life this music and you declare it over your life this music that is on about how i'm a bad this i'm on my thought ish i'm the just tone it down so can i challenge you to do that and ada was like okay so she says that's the first challenge don't worry you don't have to write anything down i've got it on my exercise notes over here um, so that's the first thing I want to challenge you. I want you to be very conscious about the words you speak out. So the first thing is we're going to stop saying, I'm crazy, I'm a mess, I'm having a breakdown. You're not. You're absolutely not. And again, the power of the tongue is very real. Then she says, Ada, do you know what the Holy Spirit is? And Ada says, yes. And she says, what is it? What is the Holy Spirit? And Ada says, it's the presence of God. And Mrs. M, I mean, Dr. M says, absolutely. You are on point. The Holy Spirit is the presence of God. Meaning this spirit has been left with us to teach us, to convict us. In other words, to make us aware of things such as the truth, to empower us, to guide us, to protect us that is the holy spirit and so i don't think that like you say i don't think you're having a breakdown or you're, you're going crazy no i think that the holy spirit is speaking to you that's what i think is happening here and i want to break this down for you let's go back and look at your dream first of all you spoke about the months being separate or separated by a calendar that's how you were able to tell that this happened this month this that and the other so let's break down the dreams first of all let's start with the quitting your job and then of course let's tie it to the auction the event that rooftop auction you went to ada you have been coming into my office for over a year and one of the things that we have both become very aware of is the fact that you're not particularly happy in your job. You haven't been for a very long time. You've been looking to branch out. I think there's a bit of fear. Understandably so, we're in a very difficult time. When we're in a pandemic, it's tough. So you have been in your mind wanting to branch out, do your own thing, and there's that fear that's holding you back. But I think the Holy Spirit is kind of giving you that nudge and that indication that actually... It is a good idea to leave your job because that's not your purpose. Your purpose isn't to be hidden like that. You've got so much to offer. You're such a smart woman and you need to be in a place where that can absolutely be valued. And that's why I believe you were at that auction because I believe God is saying to you that not only do I believe that you, because remember the Holy Spirit is an extension of God. So the, the Holy Spirit is God. So of course, when you when you when you look at um, that auction, that event, you want to. Sorry, when you look at the auction, it's about or you were interacting with somebody, talking to them about this initiative, this going to um, supply clean water in these villages. I think that the Holy Spirit might be saying to you that um, it's a very good idea for you to branch out, and you don't necessarily have to go and do a. Um, supplying clean water initiative but you need to do something that's aligned with his kingdom make sure that you step into your purpose and you make sure that your purpose has to do with his his kingdom it's somehow tied into his kingdom 
Another thing, let's look at that issue with Ella. You going to Ella's birthday party. You went to this birthday party. You were sitting in the car. You were watching Ella, you know, celebrating this birthday party without you. I think you miss your sister. I think you miss your sister. I think that that argument you guys had a couple of months ago um, struck a chord with you because I think your sister said something to you that you know to be true, which is you've got so much potential. You have so much potential and you're not, or you haven't realized it because you're kind of living in just this chaotic, unorganized type of life. And I think when she said that to you, it struck a chord. And in, instead of taking time to absorb it and to understand it, you took offense. And I think you two know that your life is a little unorganized and a little chaotic. And you know that purely because... Again, look at the dream, that plummeting lift. You rising, 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 and all of a sudden, everything just coming right back down chaotically, quickly. And so I think that you somewhat know too that it has been a bit chaotic. It has been a bit chaotic. And I think it's time you forgave your sister for that because you miss her. That's why she's coming through in your dream because you're thinking about her. Another thing I want to point out, and this is probably going to be a bit of a sensitive topic, but I mean, this is a very safe space. Um, I believe you trust me. That's why you've been coming to me for over a year. The issue of sleeping around. Now, don't get me wrong. I agree. It's important to own your body. It's important your body, um, your rules. You. It's important to own your body. But I feel like there's a part of you that knows what you're doing is not aligned with your spirit. It's not aligned with what you truly feel comfortable with. And I feel the thing that signaled that is two things. Number one, you leaving Max's apartment the way you did. You were ashamed. You said it yourself. You were ashamed. So you got up out of there. Why were you ashamed? What was so shameful about it? If you really felt like what you were doing was okay, why did you feel you had to rush out of there? Why? I think that the reason you felt that way is because, again, it doesn't align with what your spirit is telling you is okay. And while I'm here for owning your body, yes, own it, take care of it, love it, speak kindly about it and to it, but don't violate it. Don't violate it. So when you're doing what you're doing and you're sleeping around, that's a violation to your temple. God considers your body his temple. Not only is it a violation to your temple, it's a violation to the spirit, the spirit he's placed inside of you. And that's why I feel like some of these things are coming through in your dreams as well. That's why in the dream you couldn't verbalize to Sarah what you were feeling in that moment when all those guys were in that restaurant. You just couldn't get the words out. You felt some type of way. You felt ashamed. You said that in the dream you kind of sunk a bit. You were feeling a bit like what's going on here. That's what it is. And so I want you to take a moment to think about it because I know You'll tell me, well, society, this, that, and the other, like a lot of my female patients do. She said to her, Dr. M said to her, you know, I see a lot of women. I have a lot of women um, coming to see me. And this issue of casual relationships and sex comes up a lot, very frequently, actually. And you'd be shocked at how many women are not as comfortable with it or not as okay with it as they make it out to be, as they make it out to be. They really are not. And when I ask them, like, why? Why are you not okay with it? Why are you feeling some type, type of way um, about it? Why are you feeling ashamed? They say, I mean, it's just frowned upon by society. And Dr. M was like, but then I remind them that actually that's exactly what society is encouraging. Society is encouraging women to go out there and to do their own things and to refer to them as sluts and to have their own, just to go out there and do whatever they want to do. So is it society that's really telling you that you shouldn't be doing it? And they take a moment to absorb it. Like, actually, I don't know. Dr. M said to her, I'm not here to shame you. 
I'm absolutely not here to shame you. I don't believe shame is something you should be carrying around because it is not a spirit of God. I don't want you to be ashamed. I want you to start making decisions that are empowering to you, Ada, to you. Decisions that make you feel good. Decisions that lead you to healing. And so that's my number two. My number two, so the first exercise is challenging you to be more cautious about what you say. Number two, I want you to make sure you start planning your life out with everything that was in the dream. I think what needs to happen is you now need to have a plan to make sure that this year doesn't feel chaotic. It doesn't begin and end with questions and we don't want chaos. So plan your life out. We need to start putting down objectives, goals, how you plan on reaching those goals. Let's plan your life out. And then number three, Ada, call your sister. 